Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Food, girls, weather, money, just a few of the things that I'm going to cover. The things that were a bit of a shock when I first got to the Philippines. First off, girls. Um, first of all, let me say that 80% of my viewers, subscribers are males, uh, according to YouTube Google. 20% uh, are females, so I, I want to get some female input here too. But uh, one of the big surprises when you come here, as a mature uh, retired male uh, from a Western country anyway, is that uh, you are approached oftentimes uh, by girls, younger girls, and or their friends. Uh, countless times I was in a store to purchase something. The first uh, month or two I was here buying uh, appliances, uh, different types of things I needed for my condo uh, that I was renting. And uh, one of the first questions I get is, uh, sir, where is your wife? And when I say that, uh, well, I'm not married. Well, I have a girl for you. And uh, they're not trying to set me up with a prostitute. They actually have a friend, a relative, a working uh, companion. In fact, oftentimes they'll say, Sir, uh, by this time I oftentimes have two or three or four people surrounding me interested in this foreigner and what he's doing in the country. And, uh, Sir, they point to the girl standing there, often in her mid-30s. And, uh, Sir, she is looking. Give her your phone number. And that, that happened dozens and dozens of times. Now I will admit, back in the USA, this didn't happen. Girls in their 20s and 30s and 40s were not approaching me. Their friends were not approaching me and trying to set me up with dates, if you can believe that. I'm also interested uh, in, in the girls out there that are watching this uh, Filipinos and, and foreigners who, who are here visiting and living here, uh, what type of experiences you have uh, in, in that realm, dating and being approached, uh, the country, uh, the males are, have a bit of a reputation like many other Latin countries of, of being a little bit aggressive in that area, so I'm just curious what happens with you girls. The change in food can have a major impact on your life. This was my first meal at my first hotel in Cebu City, Cebu, the Philippines. And uh, the scrambled eggs and some vegetables, that was good and healthy. Rice, I haven't eaten rice in years and years and years. Uh, would would be, well, I'll take that back. I occasionally at a Chinese restaurant I would get rice. Uh, but uh, that it's a change in the way you're eating. Now, I live in a big enough city, Cebu City, with, with malls and uh, lots of options like McDonald's. There's a couple Burger Kings. Um, I, I found a couple restaurants that serve more Western-type style foods. Uh, but it, it took some getting used to. The, I started eating rice m more regularly because oftentimes for breakfast, for instance, uh, Potatoes, uh, other options are not available, uh, readily anyway. And uh, it seems like you get cucumber and tomato with uh, many of your meals as well. Finding brewed coffee can be a challenge. Uh, they have what they call three-in-one, uh, instant coffee, creamer, and sugar oftentimes. So it's hard to find brewed coffee. I did find it here. Um number of different types of things. If you live out in smaller towns and cities uh, that you've gone to meet with uh, people that you've met online, uh, your options may be quite limited out there. Beef products are not real common in restaurants here. Uh, a lot of pork, lechon is real big, and the pork here is different than what we're used to back in the USA, uh, generally speaking. Uh, so that's something to get used to. Uh, your fast food places, your McDonald's, uh, Jollibee's different. Uh, they serve a lot more than burgers. They Almost all of them serve spaghetti, and most of the sp spaghetti is, has a quite sweet sauce. Uh, so that's something else. Unless you're from the Northeast, I know uh, I've been in areas in New York 
uh, where they like to add a lot of sugar to their spaghetti as well. So even even if you find a familiar food, it may be cooked and taste much different than what you're used to. I was amazed at the amount of private security employed in the Philippines. Uh, every place you go, uh, every McDonald's, uh, every mall that you go to has security personnel. Uh, banks have security personnel with shotguns standing outside and sometimes inside. And uh, even in the malls, after you go through the security there and the metal detectors at most malls, uh, many of the stores have their own sec pri private security people uh, standing there and one or two at each entrance. And uh, so it's uh, you see them everywhere. It's something that we're not used to. On the other hand, I don't see that many police out on the street. Uh, government police, city police, uh, see very little tra in the way of traffic police. There are traffic enforcers, traffic people that are moved around, for instance, Cebu City, because there's a little or no, there's, there's very few traffic lights and almost no stop signs. Uh, so they will send uh, traffic directors, enforcers out to direct the traffic, stand in the intersection, direct the traffic uh, at different times of the day, depending upon the amount of traffic. You don't see uh, traffic police uh, cars very rarely. Uh, so you don't see cars pulled over, vehicles pulled over, getting citations. Uh, occasionally you see uh, checkpoints uh, where they, they stop all the motorbikes or they're stopping jeepneys and checking people's IDs. Bars, places to drink alcoholic beverages and or play billiards, uh, darts, that type of thing, seem to be much rarer here in the Philippines uh, than many cities back in the USA, and I presume many cities in Europe and, and other countries as well. Um, there are some cities, I think Wisconsin and uh, Minnesota, some towns that have a bar almost on every corner. And it's a neighborhood bar. Uh, the regular people uh, go there uh, different days, show up on weekends, and uh, that's where you socialize. Uh, there are a couple of areas. Uh, Cebu City is the second largest city in the Philippines. There are a couple areas that are kind of entertainment bar oriented, but uh, uh, you don't have that same atmosphere here. I have found a number of different Filipino bars, mostly Philippines, Filipinos that, that go there, and um, I think many foreigners would be welcome there, but might feel out of place at many of those uh, you know, type of places. Uh, oftentimes has a very loud karaoke going on as well. If you get involved in that, great. I have not seen bars in the malls that I've been in in the, the smaller cities. Uh, Ayala Mall up on the very top level. Uh, they've got a number of bars and restaurants up there, primarily restaurant with alcoholic beverages. Um, the SM Mall, I don't think I've seen a bar in there, maybe a Friday's, uh, TGIF Friday's there that might serve alcohol, but uh, you'll find other restaurants that serve alcohol, but they're not the neighborhood type bars that some of us are uh, used to frequenting back in our other countries. In the bigger cities like Cebu City, Manila, of course, uh, you can find places, Angela City, I'm sure, um, you can find places where there, there are quite a few uh, expats, foreigners living in those areas where they congregate uh, for their more western type foods and entertainment and uh, alcoholic beverages, that type of thing. But it takes some time to uh, find those places. Foreign money can always be a challenge. Um, you need to know what your country's current uh, currency exchange rate is obviously and then uh, uh, for instance these are the bills the 20 the 50 the 100 uh, 200 that you don't see very often 500 and 1000 and uh, the exchange rate for the US dollar is about a uh, dollar is about 53 pesos uh, and, and that will change I think it was 45.5 when I came here in August 2015 
so I, I generally just use 50 pesos to the dollar uh, for my figures because it generally costs you a little bit of money to, if you're going to use an ATM or a money transfer service, whatever, there's some a fee involved, and that takes away from the, the total exchange rate, obviously, when, they, when it costs you to exchange money. Uh, a 500 peso bill, Philippine peso bill, is about 10 U.S. dollars. Of course, 1,000 is about 20 U.S. dollars. Um, give you an idea, a 100 peso bill is about two dollars. They have come out uh, with a couple other coins. They've got a 10, a 5, a 1, and then uh, percentages of 1 peso coins, and they've come out with a new 5 peso coin that looks very close, almost the same size as a 1 peso, So unless, and it's the same color. So unless you really look at it and feel it, uh, you can very easily give somebody 5 pesos instead of a 1 peso coin. If you exchange your currency at the airport when you come in, chances are they will give you uh, a, a many 1,000 peso bills. Be sure to ask them for smaller bills as well because uh, many people, taxi drivers, uh, different places that you're going to want to spend your money will tell you, Sir, ma'am, I don't have any change for that bill. And you will end up giving them a very large tip. Uh, so be sure to uh, get smaller bills when you exchange, and it's a constant battle. Uh, those smaller bills go very quickly, and pretty soon you're out of the smaller bills again, and you have to go someplace, buy something, uh, just to break the, the larger bill and get the smaller bills again. The people of the Philippines. Uh, uh, shock isn't really the right word, although there's a number of aspects of the, of the population here that are... Uh, could be called shocking, the poverty that uh, you see in some areas. Uh, the, the friendliness and helpfulness of so many of the Filipino people uh, looking out for me uh, when they think that I might be in an area that maybe I shouldn't be there. Um, but I continue, uh, after two trips and three years here, I continue to be amazed at how friendly they are, how helpful they are, and... Uh, I've even had, I've, well, I've, those are stories for another time, but uh, had, had people insist on walking with me through an area that they thought I might not be the safest place <laughs> for a foreigner. Uh, but also the, the poverty uh, that you see in many areas. I, I'd watched a lot of videos and, and read a number of books before I came here, and I thought I was uh, very well prepared for anything and everything. Uh, but I must say that... Uh, when I first landed in Manila and then changed planes, flew back out to Cebu City, uh, looking down on all those uh, those settlements, those those shacks that people were living in, uh, it was a bit of a shock. And I visited some of those types of areas uh, here in Cebu area, and still the people are just amazing, amazingly friendly and helpful and. Uh, Welcome, welcoming, and amazingly happy. They obviously uh, want a better life for themselves and their children, but uh, it just amazes me that uh, they're some of the happiest people in the world. And I think they were rated as some of the happiest people in the world on some one of these uh, studies they did a while back. It makes living here that much more enjoyable uh, when you look at the challenges and frustrations some days, uh, but you have all those friendly people around you. Languages in the Philippines are very, very interesting. Uh, there are two official languages, I, I understand. You have Filipino, which is really a combination of a number of uh, different Filipino languages, and you have English as the second official language. Most people speak probably the most efficiently, proficiently, uh, a third language, which is the language in their, the area that they live in and grew up in. Cebu, Cebuano is the, is the language most people use. Uh, in Manila, uh, the Filipino is the main language, but you will hear most of them speaking what's called Taglish. They will go back and forth between 
Tagalog, or Filipino, really, Filipino and English. And their sentences will be, will, might be half English and half uh, the Filipino language, and it's called Taglish. And I always consistently hear it on, uh, on the uh, Philippine news channels. They're bouncing back and forth between the two languages. And uh, it makes it challenging, to say the least. Um, many people, I had somebody comment on a, on a previous uh, video I did about speaking, I think it was called Speaking English with English Speaking Filipinos. Uh, that 92% uh, of Filipinos are proficient in the English language. Well, that's not true. Uh, I've talked to a, a guy from Switzerland that ran a resort over in Bohol, and uh, growing up he learned, I think, French and German and English. And I asked him how his French was, and he says, oh, you use it or you lose it. And he pretty much had lost his uh, French, but he regularly had uh, German visitors uh, visiting his uh, resort, and so he used his German on a regular basis. I have found that many of the people who speak uh, a pretty good English uh, also their 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 accents are different. They uh, their vowel pronunciation is different than what we're used to in uh, many of the Western countries. Uh, a map, uh, they say a mop, mop. A a fan, a fan, like a blowing air fan. Uh, fun, sounds like fun to me. So hey, there can be some confusion in terms. Sometimes it's a challenge and can be fun or a little frustrating uh, back and forth and trying to get a point across or understanding what they're trying to tell you. The weather and climate of the Philippines uh, has actually been a good surprise, a good shock for me. It was the one thing that I thought uh, might keep me from staying here on a longer basis. I was afraid that the heat and humidity would just be too much for me. Uh, my first six, seven months here, uh, I, I had days because I walk a lot. I get out and I, I spend it outdoors. And uh, there were some very oppressive days, but I acclimated uh, fairly quickly. And uh, when I needed to stop and cool off and, and uh, drink some water, that type of thing, I, I, I did those types of things. But uh, I heard a, an interview the other day on Bud Brown's channel. It was over in Dumaguete, and he was interviewing a lady that came from the southeastern uh, states in the U.S., I think Mississippi maybe, and uh, she stated, and it's, it's what I believe I've heard many other people from uh, the U.S. southern states especially uh, say that it's, I don't think it's as hot here. It's not as hot and it's a different type of humidity. And I believe that, that generally is the case. Uh, the climate across much of the Philippines doesn't change very much across the whole year. And it's, it's uh, warm or hot. It's in the mid, uh, it's in the mid 80s uh, to up to about 90 here in our wet season, what they call wet season, and gets down to about 76 early in the, early in the morning. About a 10, 10 to 15 degree uh, variation every day, and that's pretty standard. If you want cooler temperatures, you have to go up in elevation. Uh, we get uh, occasional typhoons. Uh, the eastern coast and the northern half of the Philippines get most of the uh, effects of the typhoons. Uh, Luzon, up in Manila area, they've had a lot of flooding from low pressure systems uh, running up through that way. We've had uh, rain, of course this is our rainy season. Most of our rain uh, in many parts of the Philippines it will rain for 20, 30, 40 minutes, uh, a number of days during the week, during our wet season, and uh, then that'll be it for the day. It might rain again a little bit later. Uh, there again, usually not very long. Uh, but uh, life goes on, and uh, I've ad adapted well to it. If you're familiar with the Floridas and Georgias, Mississippis, Alabamas, even up in Minnesota where I grew up, uh, uh, the summers I, I know would get sometimes uh, July and August 
uh, 90 degrees, sometimes over 100 degrees with 80% 80, 80 humidity or more. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's bearable. If you can handle that, uh, you can handle the, the weather in the Philippines. If you love the cold weather, uh, then you aren't going to find it here. Animals in the Philippines, especially stray dogs and cats, uh, that just seem to be, many of them just barely surviving, uh, running around uh, without collars. And uh, very few of them, in my experience, most of them are not aggressive, but they're also not friendly. And uh, I've had dogs growing up and cats, and uh, occasionally you, if, if you try to reach out and, and pet one or, or kneel down and approach one, uh, they don't want anything to do with you if you don't have food for them, and they'll start barking at you and uh, get a little aggressive that, at that point in time. And I've even had ones that, that don't seem to be aggressive during the day, that if I'm walking later at night in an area, they, they must know that you know, people don't walk in this area at night. Uh, this must be a stranger. And uh, they probably don't understand my English. They, so I tried speaking to them in Cebuano, the couple words that I knew in Cebuano. <laughs> and uh, at first I thought that made a difference, but I'm uh, not sure that it did. But uh, anyway, the, it is it is kind of uh, heart-wrenching uh, to see all these uh, animals out there just, uh, just surviving on the street. And nobody seems to be taking care of them. Occasionally you will see uh, animals, dogs, especially in very, very small little cages. Uh, and you don't see them with water and or food. So, you you know, they would die if they didn't get some sometime during the day. But uh, sometimes you'll hear them barking for hours and hours and hours. And they usually there's a reason they're barking. They're thirsty or hungry or something or they're in such a uh, some miserable state. Uh, but anyway, that can be a little bit shocking as you come here. I think in the, uh, the Thailand has a similar issue with it, so some parts of Thailand. Lady boys can be a big surprise to many people if you haven't been around any areas that uh, have had them in the past. I understand that this is a picture of somebody in uh, Thailand, the only picture I found. Uh, site I use, Pixabay, offers uh, free pictures. And I found this picture there uh, from Thailand. Uh, but anyway, you will you will find them. I walk a lot, so I probably encounter more than many people, and uh, m many of them uh, will will greet you just like many people in the Philippines are friendly, and and they will greet you. Uh, some are a little more aggressive. Say, Take me home with you, and uh, that type of thing. I've been told that pe from people that live in Thailand and have visited here as well that they're much more aggressive and. Uh, pursuing you in Thailand than they are here in the Philippines. My experience with people who approach me like that is that once I tell them once or twice that I'm not interested and also the people asking for money, uh, they stop bothering me generally. And uh, my experience in the U.S., for instance, with, with uh, many aggressive panhandlers was, was that they would in fact get very aggressive and uh, would not like to take no for an answer, but uh, here again, I find most Filipinos to be very friendly in general. I hope those uh, 10 areas that might possibly uh, create some culture shock in the Philippines, I uh, hope they give you some insights into the culture here and uh, give you a, a better comfort level if you're thinking about uh, visiting and or retiring, moving here, working here. Uh, you're halfway across around the world, many of you, a uh, long ways from home. It's a different culture, uh, different languages, different food, uh, but it can be a great adventure. The people are very friendly in general. Uh, so uh, your attitude, if you bring the right attitude, is going to have a lot to do uh, with, with how much you enjoy or don't enjoy the people and the area and the culture. Thanks for watching. I look forward to your comments about the subject. Uh, I could have gone on for a couple more hours probably. Um, please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe. 
safe travels to you all wherever you're at, and we'll see you next time.